Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, in today's video, we are going to be talking about how to automatically update your UI collection views or perhaps table views whenever you insert new items into your core data database. So I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by going into the iOS simulator here. I'm going to click into Steve's jobs, show his collection view or his chat log controller. Click on this little area down here hit a test send message, we get a message in there. And then if I hit the simulate button on the very top right, we get some messages that get entered before that test message. So basically we have gone through all the required steps to set up the project to this point. And I'm going to show you how to do this without the very tedious calculations of actually inserting individual messages into the collection view. Um, I guess in other words, I am talking about this handle send function here. And basically every time we create a new message, we insert it into the database and then we do some really, really um, very tedious insertion index calculations. And then we insert it into the collection view. Um, and on top of that, the simulate button here actually does a little bit more than we would hope. And basically it sorts the message after you append it into the messages array, and then it figures out what the index is. So there's a lot of problems with this approach. For example, if you wanted to enter two messages, you'd have to do a lot of calculations to actually figure out what these indices should be. Okay. Having said all that, hope you guys are still with me. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to actually approach this problem, uh, in a different way. And the concept here is to use a NS fetch results controller to establish your uh, collection view rows. Now, what I mean by that is to create a uh, fetch results controller here, right above view to load. So I'm going to create it right here. If I can type it out correctly, let's create it as an NS uh, fetched a results controller. So you notice how we don't have access to that class. So let's go all the way up to the top, import core data like so, and go back to this method or this uh, class property here and use NS fest results controller set it equal to bracket bracket. And then we'll let FRC equals NS fetch results controller. <clears throat> and then we have to use this instantiator right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and return FRC down here and execute this block with a paren paren. And at the end of this uh, variable declaration, we'll get a fetch results controller. So we need these couple of parameters inside of this uh, initializer. And the first one is going to be this fetch request here. And it is called NS fetch request with an entity name. And we're using messages inside of this controller. So let's use message string and we'll use this fetch request object right there. Now this managed object context, we'll just get it really quickly like this. So what is context? Well, we retrieve it from this delegate object here, uh, that is accessed by UI application, shared application with delegate downcast it as now delegate like that. And then finally we just set context to this manage object context property and then use context here for section name key path, just use nil and cache name is nil. So don't, don't worry so much about these two parameters. As long as you set it to nil, you should be fine for most use cases. All right. Now let me tell you what we want to do with this variable here. Essentially fetch results controller has a method on it called perform fetch and it's going to complain with an error and we have to use a try like this and then catch the potential error that the perform fetch will throw. So let's do catch let error, print out the error if we get one. All right. Now if I run this, I want to actually do this. So let's just print one, two, three for now. I'm going to run the application with all that code uh, inserted into our controller. So nothing's going to change just yet. So 
upon clicking the controller, you notice how we get it crashed. So basically it's saying fetch request, uh, fetch request requires a sort descriptor. And let's just fix that here. So fetch request sort descriptors equals an array of NS sort descriptors like that. And then we get that. So just command click in there and we get key is date and ascending is true like so. So the reason why we do this is because each message inside of that controller has a date attribute on it. So if we go back to the uh, core data file, we get message and it has a date attribute right there. And basically this is saying, let's just sort all of these uh, messages and let's sort it by the date and have it ascending to be true. And then now we can actually click inside of this controller. Now it's printing one, two, three down into the console. And basically one, two, three, we're going to replace with fetch results controller dot sections. So I'm going to actually do count like that. <clears throat> so when I click on this, the uh, controller, sections dot count will actually be one. So we get the one right there and I'm going to type out one more little bit here. So let's do section zero uh, number of objects. And basically this is going to return the number of objects for this fetch right here and click there and we get 10, right? So basically it's returning 10 messages inside of this fetch results controller, but we actually only see six messages here. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now <clears throat> we actually want to actually have it print six. And we do that by setting a predicate on a fetch request like so, and as predicate with a format of, let's see, this should be friend.name equals uh, present alpha like that. And for this, we'll use friend.name like this. Okay, so now it's going to complain about this friend property. And basically, we will change let right here to lazy var, and then we'll have access now to self dot friend and we'll just unwrap both those values like this so it's kind of important that you do self dot friend bang dot name bang and now you'll be able to filter the messages by the steve jobs character in this use case so now we get six and that's exactly how many messages we have inside of our uh, array right here so pretty good now I want to show you what we want to do with fetch results controller right now. First, we will replace a number of items in section right here. And we're going to re replace this count. And essentially, we're not going to use messages anymore. We're going to use the fetch results controller by doing this. So let's use if let uh, count equals, let's see fetch results controller sections and we just use zero because we only have one section and then we'll use number of objects like that uh, let's see I think we need a question mark right there and then we'll just return count like this and then we can safely remove messages from our code now if I run this again we will get uh, the exact same thing but it's now going to be using fetch results controller count. So we get six and I want to fix this uh, cell for item at index method by doing kind of the same thing. So now we have to actually get the message from uh, this fetch results controller there. Let's paste it there and we can actually use object at index path, passing in index path like that and then downcast it as a message. So a lot of this calculation here is based on this message uh, variable and we can just safely remove all of this code here to so just use this message object above. And then we can also remove, let's see, this entire bit and then build. So I'm going to build that and run again, just to prove it to you that our code still works exactly as it was before. 
Now the final method that I have to modify is this uh, size for item at index path. And let's just modify it the exact same way as we did for cell. So let message equals fetch results controller object at index path, index path like that. And then we can just do this here. So doo -doo -doo, message text equals message dot text. What does that give us? So ambiguous use of text. Okay, so we need to downcast this as a message like that, and then we should be fine. So now that we've replaced a couple of areas where we were using the messages array, we can now safely just use the fetch results controller that gives us the proper ordering of all of these messages inside of this array here. Okay, so that's pretty good. And I'm going to just scroll to this messages section here. And basically, I kind of have um, a list of messages that I want to present inside of my controller. And I guess in other words, I mean, I can replace this whole array and anywhere I see this messages array being used, I'm going to just fix the errors right now. So we get these uh, error messages here. And basically, inside of simulate, when I hit simulate, I'm inserting some messages inside of the array, and I don't really care about this code anymore. So I'm just going to comment it out. And also, this doesn't need to be tracked anymore, so let's just insert the message like that. Finally, let's see. Every time we tap the keyboard, we do some scrolling logic being executed there. So I'm going to comment that out for now. And... Okay, and every time we hit the send button, we actually append messages inside of the array of messages. So I am going to comment that out as well. And let's just move this input text equals nil right there. And also let's get rid of this warning right there. So a lot of uh, cleanup that was kind of necessary after I removed this messages array. And basically if I run the code now, I can uh, get the exact same controller without the dependency of this messages array here. So to clean up the code a little further, I'm just going to delete all the lines of code that I just commented out. So let's just remove that and then remove this as well. <clears throat> And then I'll just keep that because I'll actually have to fix that a little bit later. Okay. So where am I right now? Let's go back to fetch results controller here. So now that I actually kind of removed the messages um, array, handle send is actually not performing the insertion of uh, this new message anymore. So test, we don't really get the test in there. Go back and we get the test in there. So let's go ahead and fix this handle send uh, operation by implementing a function on uh, fetch results controller. So let's do this here. I actually want to implement a method that is part of this protocol here. So let's do ns fetch results controller uh, delegate like that. And then inside of this fetch uh, results controller, we set delegate equals self. And I'm going to tell you why in just a bit. Uh, let's implement a method called controller. Did change object right here. And then every time a new object is inserted into core data, this method is actually called. And so what I mean is we can actually do if type right here for this type variable. We said if type is actually an insertion into core data, we will just do collection view. Uh, let's see, do, 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 collection view dot insert items at index path like that. And index path will just be new index path unwrapped like so. And we have to set this as an array. And just to kind of illustrate what's happening, I'm also going to scroll to that new index path, put a bang right there. 
and the scroll position will be bottom, animated is true. Okay. So to kind of recap, I'm implementing this method that is a delegate method, which is part of NS Fetcher results controller delegate. And this gets fired every time I insert a message into core data inside of handle send. So let me just show you what that does. Right there, test, send. So it actually gets inserted into this row right here. And we're no longer using the message array calculation anymore. And it makes the code a lot cleaner inside of handle send. All right. So that was easy enough. Now I want to also fix one more thing. Um, and let me just see if I can reproduce this. So let's go up here and I'm going to hit the simulate button there and we get this insertion as well inside of our uh, controller. And so all that is uh, kind of given to us kind of for free inside of this controller did change object. Now I want to show you what happens if I hit the simulate button and if I introduce two messages into core data, it's actually going to crash. So let me just type out this string here, another message that was received a while ago. And I want to run and show you that when two rows get in, uh, inserted into core data, it actually crashes. So if I type test here, hit send, that's fine. But if I simulate and I try to insert two things into core data, it says that the number of objects no longer match the number of rows inside of your collection view. So the way to fix that is a little bit more involved, but I'm just going to show you right here how to fix it. So uh, first create a new variable called block operations and set it to a NS block operation class like that. And so now this is an array of NS block operations and we will actually use that right here. So whenever it is a type of insert, we'll say block operations, add or append an operation like this, minus block operation, open paren, block, hit enter again, we get the actual block operation that we declare inside of this block. So let's just cut the insert out and paste it inside. And let's use self insert like that. And for this, you need to include another parentheses. And then we actually don't want to scroll to that index anymore because sometimes you just do not know, uh, you just don't know which index to scroll to. And I'll fix that in just a bit. So now that we have this block operations appending to, uh, or appending these new insertion operations, we'll click here, test, and then you notice that it doesn't actually do anything. And we fix that by actually implementing a second final method called controller did change content. And we'll just use the collection view right here. And we'll call perform batch updates with update block like that and enter. And Boolean completed will be completed with this completion code down here that we'll implement in just a bit. And so whenever we are performing uh, updates, we can just use all of these operations here in here to run. <clears throat> in other words, I'm going to loop over all these block operations and self dot block operations, and we'll call operation start. Now, hopefully you guys are still with me. Um, what this means is to simply run the insertions that we add in here upon the controller changing its content. So let's do that test send, and then we get this test down here. And if we simulate, we get these messages inserted into the collection view and it no longer crashes. So the final fix to do here is to actually scroll to that, uh, that new message that's being entered. So let's go into this completion block here and we do uh, self dot collection view dot scroll to item at index path. And what is this index path? Well, let's create it right here index path equals NS index path for item. And we need these two parameters. A section will always be zero. And let's just create that last item parameter right here and set it to 
fetched, uh, I think it's self, because we're inside of a block. Self fetch results controller. Uh, sections and let's see, unwrap it. At the zeroth section, we get number of objects minus one. So I'll let you guys kind of look at that and figure out why it is, but basically it's the uh, last item of the collection view. So let's use index path here and then scroll to the bottom of the collection view with animation to true. I'm gonna run this and we should have a pretty good uh, scrolling effect as soon as we type in a message down here. So test, we get the scroll. Simulate, we also scroll down to the very bottom. Pretty good, pretty good. Now, I think we're almost done. The only thing we need to fix is this bit here. And basically we are handling the key keyboard notification every time we tap into this area. So click, it should scroll to the last message, but uh, we need to fix this part here. And I am just going to copy and paste that and paste that in here. And we should be good to go. Uh, essentially, it's just scrolling to the last message inside of your collection view. So let's do like that test. Scrolls nicely inside of there. Simulate, we get that as well. All right, pretty good. Uh, I think that is a pretty good stopping point for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like it if you do. Um, the thing I wanna talk about in the next video is actually upon insertion of these new messages, when I hit this back button, these messages are actually not up to date anymore. So we're gonna apply the same type of logic to, uh, to, to, to this friends controller class and we are going to have it automatically update using a NS fetch results controller to manage what, or, or kind of manage the ordering of these messages and how to update them automatically. So hope you guys enjoyed and make sure to subscribe for that video. And yeah, that's it. Uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.